Okay, hello, Gio. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. So I'd like to begin, uh, as I do with my podcast episodes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to know a bit more about you. Can you tell us about your area of expertise and how your interests have brought you there? Yeah, so I'm an undergraduate um, student majoring in psychology. And psychology is like the field that I decided to pursue after um, realizing how like relevant and applicable things like that I learned in a psych psychology classroom where to like thinking about my own life and kind of like who I am as a person. Um, and so because because of that, I'm like particularly interested in personality psychology. Um, I also want to get more into psychoanalysis. Um, these two fields are like different in approaches, but both of them really help me like self-reflect and kind of get creative with like understanding myself um, and also others in a way that like uncovers things that I wasn't really aware before. Um, another big reason why I really like psychology is it's like so versatile and interdisciplinary. So like, you can apply it to like any academic field and then like shed light on something bigger. So last winter, last January, I decided to take my first art history course. Um, and it was on like the history and like the theory of photography. Um, I simply just took that because I personally like taking pictures myself, um, but this class like was so much more than just like learning about taking pictures. It was like, it kind of like opened up a new way of like thinking for me. So thinking like theoretically about what it means to be taking a photograph, um, more abstractly on like how photographs convey things that are not like apparent um, surface level or formalistically. So I really loved that like mode of thinking and I just enjoyed that course in general. So the summer after that course, I reached out to my art history professor from that winter and asked her if she could supervise me on an independent research project that's based in art history. Um, and I was also thinking about how I could like possibly apply my background in psychology to this project. And so I realized kind of like understanding and learning about the artist as a person revealed a lot. Um, more layers within their works um, and my background in psychology could really help with kind of understanding that so I think that's how I kind of delved into like this interdisciplinary work of psychology and art history and it was really like eye-opening for me to think about psychology in like a more abstract way and just making connections between the two fields like what is within an artwork and also like just literature and psychology so I hope that answered the question. Yeah, it's fascinating. I never heard of photography and psychology being talked about in the same paper before, so it was really interesting to read. Um, so your St. Spring Institute undergrad essay, prize-winning essay, uh, congratulations, by the way, explores the photography of Shomei Tomatsu and its capacity to heal wartime trauma. Can you introduce us, introduce us to Tomatsu? What was his experience of war and how did this manifest in his work? Yes. So Shomai Tomatsu, he was born in 1930 in Nagoya. Um, it's like a city in Japan. And he was 11 years old when um, Japan declared the Second World War. So throughout his childhood, um, he like he witnessed a lot of like firebombing and just like a lot of war violence at a young age. Um, and a few years after Japan um, announced its defeat, he got into photography in college. And so he was naturally taking a lot of pictures of his community that was like hit by poverty and like inflation, um, just like distress coming from the war. And his works were, I think, really good at capturing not just like the objective like landscape of this post-war Japan, but also kind of like shedding light on the emotions that he and like other Japanese people were feeling. Um, that wasn't just like anger towards America, but just like a complex mixed feelings of sadness, confusion, like deprivate, deprivation, um, maybe like also a sense of appreciation and ambivalence. Um, so his photographs really exposed kind of Japan that had been changed not only physically, but also culturally and like psychosocially as well. Um, in my essay, I try to make connections between the war violence that he was subject to and also was forced to see during his childhood um, with what appears in his photographs of the post-war Japan. Um, the field of psychology really emphasizes the influence that your childhood has on your future career, life, like things you end up doing and making. 
So I use that idea like as a basis to explore how there are certain themes or like motifs from his childhood that resurfaces in his later works. Um, I guess by motifs, I don't really mean like physical things necessarily, but more in like an abstract way, like perspectives or angles of seeing America that took over Japan or like emotions he had felt towards adults um, as a child. And so I guess like understanding his experience of seeing the war as a child really like enriches the meaning of his works, I think, because it allows you to see how, you know, childhood trauma continues to make its way to the future. Um, and also how wartime trauma continues to persist in a post-war society. And so I think my paper is just like all about answering a question of how his childhood experiences with war really show up. Um, so you can read that if you want to kind of read about it more, but yeah. Sure, great. So um, I'm kind of curious, Tamatsu's photography seems to be very personal, grappling with his own experience of war and US occupation as he was growing up. Um, was he consciously trying to capture the sentiments of others going through the same experience as well? Or was this was this more of a byproduct from his perspective? I don't think I can really say like what his true intentions um, for his photography was because like I'm not him, obviously, but he did indicate how he was fascinated with the influence of the US military presence in Japan, um, which I guess to me ind indicates like how a part of his work was just trying to embody like the experiences and sentiments of the post-war society as a whole and like other people who are a part of it. So I don't think like the documentary-esque-ness of his work purely stemmed from his goal of showcasing his like own personal specific background and experiences. Um, but at the same time, like he rejected the claim that he was a photojournalist, uh, which is like obvious from like the intense emotions and subjectivity that come out of his works. Um, so I guess taking these together, I, I want to say like he was trying to capture not only his, but also others complex emotions and ambivalence coming out of the US occupation, but this wouldn't be possible like for him to do so if he personally didn't have ex experiences of the war and you know US occupation. So. I think he was consciously, consciously trying to capture the sentiment of others, but it was largely successful because of his um, personal experience with war and the society he was working with. Um, and I guess another thing is that I realized like how my essay maybe makes it sound as if Tomatsu's like main and conscious goal of creating photography was for himself and for him to make sense of his childhood or experiences. Um, but I guess I want to make clear that like my arguments and essay, it's like very hypothetical. I was just playing around with being like theoretical and abstract. So I wanted to convey like the possibility that even if Tomatsu might have been, you know, consciously trying to capture others' experiences and the landscape he was in, he could have been like unknowingly unconsciously driven by his desire to work through his childhood drama and his personal experiences with the war, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure. And I guess, you know, given that it's a, his experience is one shared by many of that time, then it's impossible for others not to relate to his work to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you suggested in your essay that uh, Tomatsu's photography was a form of individual healing. But from my untrained eye, it seems like his frequent revisiting of his traumatic childhood sees him carry his trauma with him through childhood, uh, adulthood. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Where is the healing in this? I definitely agree um, that, you know, he frequently revisits his traumatic childhood. Um, and what I wanted to, I think what I wanted to convey through my paper was, it was through that frequent revisiting of trauma itself that kind of, I guess, like could be seen as an attempt towards healing. Um, so like working through is like a process in psychotherapy where it's believed that constantly repeating and revisiting trauma by like talking about it or artistically working with it um, helps to lead to like accepting that memory and minimizing any like defensiveness towards that memory that could cause, you know, like worse effects like repression. Um, it's almost like freeing yourself from something by facing it directly. Um, so Freud also kind of talks about how like working through helps the traumatic memory from continuously harming the individual um, and 
allows like the individual to have more power over that memory rather than vice versa. So I wanted to use this concept to see and also like interpret Tomas's works in like a more optimistic light. So I want to argue like how, even if Tomas might not have been aware, photography might have been helping him kind of like revisit and work through his traumas from childhood. And I think this becomes really convincing as you, um, you can see in like his photographs, like that contain elements stemming from his childhood. Um, and this also I elaborate in my paper as well. Yeah, definitely. And you uh, reference a lot of his interviews as well. Does he mm -hmm. explicitly state uh, how photography has helped him? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Sorry. So uh, you reference a lot of his interviews in your essay as well. Yes. And uh, does he ever explicitly state how photography helps him? Mm. There's this one mention. He later goes on to... So a lot of his early works are black and white photography, but he later... Uh, moves on into color photography and in talking about those works he does mention how his kind of like obsession like fixed obsession with um, taking pictures of the U.S. occupation in Japan it kind of like weakened or it changed in a way that it kind of elevated him to another different space if that makes sense and so I kind of want to see that as like a form of healing and because he's not like fixed in his traumatized state anymore is kind of was kind of my interpretation. He, I'm not sure if he explicitly says, oh, because of photography, I was healed, but that's kind of like what I would like to think. <laughs> um, yeah. Sure. We well, certainly make a convincing argument in the essay. So uh, Tomatsu's works seem to capture the, the zeitgeist of US occupied mm -hmm. Japan that strange switch from seeing the USA as the enemy to the benevolent occupier. Do you believe the trauma captured in his photos endures today? And mm -hmm. so there's, there is still a healing capacity for those in Japan viewing his work? Yeah, I think that also kind of goes back to like how Tomatsu was saying it, like photography kind of elevated him to this new like space or zone. Um, because I don't think like trauma or effects of trauma really ever really goes away. And I don't think healing necessarily means like a complete erasure of what happened or like bringing back the individual to the state of like original, like the original state of condition. So I kind of want to like interpret healing as more of like bringing the individual to another state that is not completely trauma, but not also completely back to normal, if that makes sense. Um, so. Yeah, I think the trauma captured in his works are still there. It's still persisting, um, even if it might not be in the same exact form. But um, I think the effects that the war and the American occupation um, had in Japan are not like reversible. And like generational trauma is also like a real thing. Um, I can't speak on behalf of Japanese people today. But I know as someone who grew up in a Korean household and was born in Korea, um, I feel like I'm still being affected by the war trauma and post-war cultures and violence that, you know, not only my grandparents went through, but also like my parents. So, um, and a lot of Shomai Tomatsu's works make this idea of like generational trauma really salient because a lot of his works depict children who I'm assuming are probably like adults today and growing up in this like post-war landscape that was like marked by poverty and this like strange occupation by like American strange cultural changes I'm sure like it led to its own trauma of sorts um but also like traumas are all I feel like interrelated and connected in their own ways um and another thing I guess in a broader sense is Shumai Tomatsu's works really capture like the problems and issues of like power dynamics that are particularly like racialized, um, which is obviously like a big issue globally today still. And so in that aspect as well, I think the trauma he captures is very relevant still in today's society. Um, and as for your second question, I think my paper focused on the possibility that like the act of photography may have been a therapeutic act for Tomatsu himself as an artist. So I'm not entirely sure about you know, like the Japanese audience and whether they would have 
felt, you know, necessarily healed by his photographs, um, especially because like everyone sees and interacts with artworks differently. But I do think that it is possible that today's audience in Japan might be able to maybe work through their own memories of the war or the poster Japan and feel understood and empathized by like viewing Tomatsu's works. So I would, I'd like to say, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, regardless of what Tomatsu's intentions were, if there is a gallery mm -hmm. showing his work around U.S. occupied Japan, it creates a space where these memories can be re re revisited. And uh, right, yeah, definitely. And it's fascinating your I, um, discussion earlier about healing as being a, a process, you know, rather than uh, mm -hmm. an, an objective to be completed and then that's it. You know, it's more like mm -hmm. uh, tending a garden, something that needs yeah. regular maintenance. You know right right yeah fascinating well once again congratulations on winning your Sainsbury Institute's undergraduate essay prize mm -hmm. and thank you for joining me this evening thank you so much